Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. I'm in Luminar Neo today and I'm talking about color and there's a lot of color tools in Luminar and I love them and I love color, but it's easy to kind of get out of control because there's so many color tools and so I wanna walk through a few tips about how you can get really perfect colors in your images using some of these tools in Luminar Neo. Let's get into it. I've got this photo here. Now the photo started like that, that's unedited and that's the current edit. And so far what I've done, as you can see, is develop raw and super contrast. And each of those tools contain a tip. So the first tip is, uh, apart from the obvious, which is always start with develop raw, because you're working with that richer raw data, do that and get your uh, base photo edit raw file adjustments done with develop raw. But in the color section, it's really tempting to come in here and move these things around, especially saturation and vibrance. Don't do it. You're better off not doing the colors in the beginning, simply because all the light changes that you may make during your edit will impact the look of color. So if you start bumping up colors, saturation and vibrance, and massive temperature and tint changes here, I feel like that can throw off what you do later. Now that's not to say don't adjust white balance, because you should. Um, if you need to. And that's not to say don't use saturation or vibrance. I almost never use saturation here. And sometimes I'll use vibrance, but only a little bit. So the point really is don't make wholesale massive color changes here, but definitely work in this section, get your light set up the way you need it to be set up so that you're in position to make the right color changes later. So that's really tip number one. And tip number two is regarding super contrast i use that as my go-to number two tool every time just about when i'm editing because it's so good at helping to adjust the light now here's the before and after and honestly it's really minor in this photo so this is not a good example necessarily of what i'm about to say but what i wanted to say regarding this is kind of what i said a moment ago in develop raw which is light changes have a big impact on the appearance of color so if you do color first and then go do a lot of contrast which is a light adjustment it can make those colors look really different really saturated for example so i tend to use develop raw and then super contrast and i make very minimal color changes in develop raw so that when i'm getting to super contrast and changing the contrast again not very much of a change in this photo but a lot of times it's a big change but when i'm here making these changes it's not throwing off the colors and impacting what I'm gonna do later. So that's two tips out of the gate. And what I wanna do now is jump into some other specific tools that I use for color and talk about tips for those. Now this was a sunset at uh, Jakul Salon. I don't really know how to say it, but it's a glacial lagoon really well known in Iceland. We were there on one of the Luminar adventures. And one of the things I like to do is use toning. And the reason why I like to use toning is based on how it's set up, it's also known as split toning, the ability to adjust colors here is separated between highlights and shadows. And that's often what you find in a photo. For me, the shadows are darker, of course, and they tend to be a little bit more blue because cooler is darker and that's blue. Um, and then the highlights tend to be brighter and warmer. That's usually where the clouds uh, are picking up the light, like in this photo. So the great thing about this tool is it's kind of already done the job for you of separating the tonal areas because you probably um, often don't want to make the same adjustments in both areas. You might want to make different ones. Toning's perfect for that. So in this case, I would come into the saturation slider. Notice I'm in highlights. I'm clicked on that. If I was clicked on shadows, it would be highlighted. I hate to say that, but it would be in bold, right? Whereas now highlights in bold or highlighted. Uh, and as you drag the saturation slider, you're picking up whatever hue this slider is set to. So I can make these hues different colors. I don't want to, I'm gonna leave it all the way to the left in the red. Uh, and you don't wanna go too high because another thing to be aware of is if you use a lot of different color tools and stack them, even if they're small edits, they do start to add up. So you wanna be careful and not do too much color work too early as kind of I said before. But Tony is great at helping to amp up those colors. If you look at the before, and the current state, I think that's a big improvement. I'm actually gonna take it down a little bit more, and that's because I wanna go into the next tip, which is also gonna be in those brighter tones. And now this tip is actually down here in the landscape category, and that's golden hour. And I absolutely love golden hour. I love using it on golden hour, sunset, sunrise kind of photos. It's so good at taking those warm tones and really making them nice and uh, golden, I guess, essentially. It really makes them pop. So if you look at the before, 
and the after the whole photo is really taken on a life of its own uh, in terms of really amping up those colors. But there's one thing I like to do with Golden Hour and is I, I like to mask in my colors because you don't always want all the color going across the entire photo. So one of the things I'll often do in a photo like this one with Golden Hour is get a mask and I'll actually get a radial gradient because you can shape this radial gradient and apply it across a fair amount of the photo and I don't want to do that much of the photo so let me drop that size a little bit. But what I wanted to do is essentially get this golden area kind of popping over here where these golden tones are kind of uh, primarily located. What I didn't want to do is have too much of it bleeding onto these icebergs over here on the right because I just didn't really like the way it looked. So now I'm kind of fading it into that area and it kind of dissipates as it goes across the frame instead of hitting the entire frame at the same amount. So before and after. And the nice thing about a gradient mask like a radial gradient, if I show you, is you have this faded area. That's the gradient portion of the mask. It allows you to fade that adjustment so you don't have an abrupt stop. You can fade it gently into the rest of the photo. Helps for a better blend. It gives you a little bit better control over the color overall. So nice little pop in color. And again, I'm going to pull that down a little bit, maybe to a 30. I'm amping them up a little bit, partly because I like it, but more importantly, uh, because it's easier for you to see. But after you've seen it, I'm kind of pulling it back a little bit because I'm using several tools. And as I said a moment ago, you want to be careful with how many tools you use. So uh, because they do, they stack, right? And so you get more and more and it becomes pretty over the top if you're not careful. But that's with toning, part of Golden Hour. And now with Golden Hour, a little bit warmer glow there, which I think just looks fantastic. But I was able to control it with the mask to have a better overall impact on the image. And now the next tool I'm going to point out, which is going to be the final tool for this demo video, is Color Harmony. It is an incredible, incredible tool. It has a lot of tools in it. In fact, it's got four. This first section with brilliance and warmth, color contrast, split color warmth, and color balance. It's got a lot in it. So that's, if you use all of that, which I don't really recommend, that's four different tools plus toning plus golden hours. So that would be six, which would be a lot. So I'm going to use two of these, which again is kind of a lot. But um, I'm going to go ahead and drag these. I'm going to take the brilliance and warmth higher. And in split color warmth, I'm going to make the warm colors a little bit warmer and the cool colors a little bit cooler. And if you look at it, it's getting over the top. Now, I like vibrant, saturated colors, but that's getting a bit past the point of realism. That's where we were and that's where we are now. So just like with the radial gradient that I used in Golden Hour, I want to use a mask here. But here, I want to use a luminosity mask which is the final tip because it gives you so much control over the light. And I want to be careful about what's happening with the really bright parts of the image, which is, of course, the highlight. So I want to condense that uh, luminosity mask to kind of get it away from some of those brighter areas. I also want to get it away from some of the darker areas. And then I'm going to move this over a little bit, fade that a little bit into the shadows, and then fade it more gently into the highlights. And so what I'm doing is controlling where this mask or really where this color adjustment is going to go in the photo because it'll impact a lot of the image and I want to be careful with it. I just kind of want to have a, uh, wanted a gentle overall pop, not a really massive kind of pop. So I'm pulling back on some of these and just making adjustments. If you're not familiar, I've got several videos about luminosity masking. I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Incredibly powerful masking type. And what you're about to see is that now the colors don't look as over the top because I controlled them with the mask and between the different tonal areas in the mask, I faded them by dragging those edges with the little triangles out on the mask. So that gives me a better overall implementation of this mask, which really comes down to blending the colors nicely and gently into the rest of the image. So before and after, subtle but nice pop. But if you remember, before I applied the luminosity mask, Brilliance and warmth and this warmth and, and cool adjustments in split color warmth, they were really popping, especially this warm here and the warm there and brilliance, those three out of those four sliders, really popping into these clouds up here and getting really intense and looking really oversaturated. But with that luminosity mask, I took that uh, adjustment essentially out of that area, faded it gently into the areas near it. So you get this nice little pop overall before and after gives you some beautiful colors. And now if you look at the before and after, 
there it is before any adjustments, and there it is now. And if you look at the sliding window, you can see how we've had a nice impact on the colors. If I could grab this thing, there we go, without really going over the top. And it really comes down to kind of taking your time and using the tools that I talked about, thinking about how the contrast and the light adjustments you make will impact your colors, and then splitting things up like with toning where you can just impact the highlights a little bit, and then golden hour with a radial mask, and then color harmony with a luminosity mask really gives you great control over the colors and allows you to create a beautiful sunset in this case amp it up without going over the top before after those are some color management tips for luminar neo masking is a huge part of it i've got lots of videos about masking so if you haven't yet subbed to the channel go ahead and do that check those videos out i'll be back soon with more of course thanks for watching i'll see you soon you guys take care of yourselves and until next time adios